Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So far we have seen the uh, theory of linear regression, right. So now we will look into the implementation of linear regression uh, using MATLAB. Again as we have been uh, stressing from the uh, beginning of the course, here we are using MATLAB, you are free to use any other uh, software. So this is the, uh, so we will initially begin with uh, simple linear regression problem, right. So wherein uh, we have this x and y data is given, right. So this is our uh, independent variable this is our dependent variable, right. Uh, so we have here uh, 7 points, right, and we want to fit this model y is equal to a0 plus a1x, right. Uh, so in MATLAB, uh, the function that we will be using is regress, right. So before uh, using regress, let us just uh, try to get uh, this plot in uh, MATLAB. So as you might uh, already know, CLC uh, helps in clearing the command window clear will help us to clear the workspace of MATLAB and close all will uh, lead to uh, closing all the currently open uh, graphic windows, right. So now we define uh, the vector x and y, right. So this is nothing but just the definition. So the uh, semicolon make sure that we get a column vector for x and column vector for y, right. And then we use the plot function. So when we say plot x comma y, if we just say plot x comma y, uh, what would happen is uh, we would not get such a plot but we would get a plot wherein all these lines are connected. So we do not want that to happen, we just want the uh, points, right. So that is what, what we are doing is we are saying plot x comma y comma this again within single quotes, uh, over here it is within single quotes. So this B stands for blue and this dot uh, stands for placing a dot. So what we are uh, asking MATLAB is to just put a blue color dot wherever the points are there, right. So we would get a, a plot similar to this. And this helps us to add the label, so this is x label, so we just want to write x and y for the x axis and the y axis, right. So again uh, we give this in single quotes, so whatever we give in single quotes will be replicated as such. So if we have given um, uh, let us say x label within single quotes if we had given temperature, right, so temperature would have been written over here, right. So this piece of code will help us to. Uh, just get this plot, right. So far we have done, right. So for linear regression, the function in the inbuilt function of MATLAB is regress. So for regress, we need to give uh, the dependent variable, comma, independent variable, right. So independent variable, it can be uh, multi variable also. So regress can do simple linear regression, multi linear regression, and we can even use it to do polynomial regression. Right. So we need to give independent var uh, dependent variable comma all the independent variables. In this case, we have only one independent variable x, right? But the model that we want to fit is a naught plus a one a naught plus a one x, right? But this reg regress function is based on the general linear least squares which we have discussed previously, right? So there, if you remember, we have to stack the independent variables with a column of ones. Right. So if you, our model has an intercept, right. So in this case, we want to fit a model which has an intercept. So what we need to do is we need to give a column of ones. So this is what we want to construct, right. Since there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 data points, we want this a column of ones, right, with 7, seven rows, right. So to get that, we will use this ones function of MATLAB, O-N-E-S. So ones function of MATLAB can be uh, used to generate as many rows and columns that are required. So right now we can actually say 7 comma 1, but if we change this x with 10 values, then again we need to go and do this, right. So instead of writing this number 7, what we will say is ones of length of x. So even if this vector x changes, it will measure the length and then it will appropriately select, right. So that is what we are doing, ones of the number of rows that we want is nothing but length of x. The number of columns that we want is 
one one column right because this is what we want so that so this is number of rows this is number of columns and this is the function so this will just give us a column of ones so how many rows seven rows because the length of x is seven and then we are stacking this x vector so basically what we are doing is 152 147 166 170 159 173 and 169 right so this is what we are constructing as capital uh, x uh, as uppercase x right so once we have constructed this we are ready to use the uh, regress function so here we need to give regress y comma x so this regress function can return a large number of values uh, all of them have their own significance but in this case uh, but in our course we have restricted ourselves to finding out this model coefficient and the coefficient of determination r square right so basically regress actually uh, gives us one two three four five output arguments the first argument is the coefficients right so it's not necessary to write b we can write any variable name right so we have chosen to write b uh, uh, you can write any variable and these three arguments the next three arguments uh, because of whatever we have in the whatever we have covered in this course uh, we are not in a position to interpret that so we are not receiving those values but if you wanted those values you can just say b comma uh, c comma d comma e or whatever appropriate variable names and stats so stats is again a variable name you could have given uh, any other uh, variable name over there right so when we do this uh, so this line will help us to solve the regression problem and the coefficients would be returned and stats uh, will be a vector right and the first value in the vector stats will correspond to the r square value right so stat, stats is going to give us a uh, number of values the first one is what we are interested uh, uh, what we are interested in right so once we have um, obtained the coefficients and the regress function right uh, we also want to plot the line so as we had seen previously in that uh, anuskomb's data uh, for at least for uh, linear regression simple linear regression it is always a good idea to have a look at the plot right rather than merely relying on r square value right so in order to plot that uh, what we want is we want the points as well as the straight line right so we want something similar to this right the points are also need the points also need to be there and we also need the line so what we are going to do is uh, so since we are going to plot on the same plot we are going to use this uh, hold on right so that means it will plot on the same plot where we had plotted the data points right so now how do i get the straight line so for straight line we need two points right if we have two points we can uh, draw a straight line so x1 y1 and x2 y2 so what we are going to do is uh, so this y1 and y2 is from the model right once this regression problem is solved the model coefficients are in this variable b so what we will do is uh, for x1 and x2 we will say the minimum value in this vector is going to be our x1 so that's what i am we are doing over here so the minimum value of x is going to be our x1 and the maximum value of x is going to be our x2 so the line is going to span from this point till this point right so once we have decided on the x values x1 uh, x2 we can calculate y1 and y2 because we know the model coefficients b right so this model coefficient will have as many elements as many columns in this x matrix right so in our case we have two columns so it will consist of two values right the first value would be the constant value because we have stacked one over here and the uh, independent variable x over here so it is one comma x so this coefficient of x is will be the second element and the constant coefficient will be the first element right had we uh, interchanged these two columns the values in b what we have got would also have uh, would also be uh, in that order so we would not get a naught comma a1 we would get a1 comma a naught right so if we give 1 comma x we are going to get a naught comma a1 right but if we had given x and 1 the coefficients would have been in the order a1 and a naught right so right now this is the convention that we have used right so the mo model is actually b of 1 so the first value of 1 plus the second value of b and uh, multiplied by the x values right so x x is a vector now right so we'll get two values for y plot 
right again this x plot and y plot are just variable names uh, you could have even uh, given x x y y right so since we are going to use it for plotting we just wrote x plot and y plot right so now we have calculated the x1 x2 over here here it will directly calculate y1 y2 it will calculate two values because x plot is a vector right so then we can plot uh, you, we can use this plot function directly to say plot x plot comma y plot right with a red color uh, line right so here we are not saying r dot if we had said r dot it would have plotted this particular point corresponding to this and this particular point corresponding to the end right but since we wanted the entire line right we are giving just r right we are not specifying any symbol next to r right so it will plot a red color line so once we are done with that we will be able to see the points as well as the model on the same plot right and then we can add a legend right so legend uh, so remember matlab is not going to decide uh, whether this is the data point or this is the model right so we need to specify that so since we started with by plotting the points right we say the first thing that we plotted is measured so it is going to take this blue dot for measured and then the second thing which we plotted was the model right so we write measured comma model uh, within single quotes separated by a comma so we will get this legend also right uh, so that's how we plot and if we type uh, just b in the command window right we will get these two values minus 10.9167 and 0 0.4390 similarly if we type stats in the command window or any variable name that you had used over here we will get this four values right uh, all these values do have their own significance but since we have not covered that as part of this course uh, we will only explain what is the first value so the first value stands for the coefficient of determination r square right so as you can see it is very simple to use the regress function for simple linear regression again as we will show even for multi linear regression uh, the procedure is rather very straightforward right so now let us look into how to solve a multi multiple regression problem uh, using the same regress function in matlab right so here we have this problem uh, wherein the model that we have to fit is uh, this y is equal to alpha x1 power beta x2 power gamma right so this is a non linear model right uh, either we can directly solve this as a non linear regression problem or we can use any one of the data transformation technique that we have seen previously okay so y is the dependent variable x1 and x2 are the independent variable so x1 x2 are the independent variable and y is the independent variable right so here we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 points right so uh, what we'll first do is we'll linearize this model right so to linearize this uh, we can take uh, ln on both sides right so this equation becomes ln y is equal to ln alpha plus beta ln x1 plus gamma ln x2 right so this is the linearized uh, form right so since we know y ln y can be calculated right so ln y we will represent it by this notation uh, y right so and this one if we see this is a naught right plus a1 ln x1 can be calculated so we will call this as x1 plus ga gamma let us say that is a, a2 is capital x2 because we know this uh, x2 so we can calculate ln uh, x1 and ln x2 so once we have calculated that this model becomes this one right so now this if you see it is the typical linear regression model which we have discussed previously so first for implementing in matlab we'll have to specify uh, the data points right so clc is again to just clear the command window clear will help us to clear the workspace so we are defining these three points right so ln y ln x1 ln x2 we are not calculating we'll just use matlab to calculate that right so we have defined all the three vectors right then we say that uh, the uppercase y the variable y is nothing but log of y so remember in matlab uh, the natural logarithm is actually log right whatever i was referring uh, whatever we have referred as ln is actually log in uh, matlab right so the uh, variable capital x1 is log of the variable uh, x1 and capital x2 is log of uh, x2 right so now we have all the data uh, in, uh, in the transformed space so the, we have this y we have this x1 we have this x2 right. 
So then we will do the uh, same thing, right? So till this we have discussed, right? So here our model actually has a coefficient, right? And a regress function needs uh, the independent, the dependent variable, comma all the dependent variable. Does not matter whether we have one in, uh, independent variable, two independent variable, or hundred independent variable. All of them have to be stacked, right? The rows are the data points, the columns are the independent variables, right? So in this case, what we actually want as x is, uh, so we will define the convention, right? So for this code, the convention is the constant term uh, a naught, and then we'll have a one the x1 coefficients and the x2 right so for a naught we'll have to stack a column of ones we'll have to have a column of ones so how many ones do we need depends on the length of x1 right so the same thing what we used previously so this will calculate the length of x1 it will generate that many uh, rows because and one column right so this will just give us a column of ones and then we stack the variable x1 and the variable x2. Remember the variable uppercase x1 and uppercase x2, right? So now we are working with this three. And then we give it into regress, right? Once we execute this code, again we will get those five variables. Uh, these three variables, again we do not, we have not seen how to interpret this. So we will get the coefficients in the variable b and the statistical parameters in the variable stats. Right? And we are interested only in the first value of stats because that corresponds to R square. Right? So once we have determined that, right, here we are not going to plot it uh, because we have th uh, x1, x2 and y. Right? So we will not plot it. Right? But our task was to actually find out what is alpha, beta and gamma. What we have found out is A0, A1 and A2. Right? Uh, so, if you remember the transformation which we did that A1 actually corresponds to beta and A2 actually corresponds to gamma, right? So, beta is nothing but the second value, gamma is nothing but the third value. Second value and third value because uh, x1 is the second column and x2 is the third column, right? So, alpha uh, is actually we have used alpha is equal to, so in previous slide if you have seen, uh, this, this is ln alpha is actually A0, so ln alpha is A0. Right. So now we have a naught. We want l alpha. So we take exponential of that. Right. So that can be done using the exp function of MATLAB. Right. So now we have alpha, beta, and gamma. Right. So we have got the parameters uh, which we which we had set out to find. Right. Once that is done, since I am not we will not be able to plot. Let us actually see that for each of this uh, x1 and x2, what would my model give? Right. So, that can be determined by this expression. Right. So, this is nothing but the values obtained by model, any variable name we have chosen as y model is equal to alpha because that is what is our mo model, alpha into x1, x1 to the power beta multiplied by x2 to the power beta. Right. So, this will give us uh, the value of the model at each of these points, right? Uh, whatever the number of points are there, for each of those points, we would get uh, the y values from the model. And we already know what are the y values which were given to us, right? So this is just a comparison of that thing, right? So after this, you could have just written uh, y, y model in MATLAB. So it would have displayed something similar to this, right? So for the, f uh, so this will help us to kind of uh, see how the fit is, right? Uh, since we are not plotting over here, from here we can see, right? So more or less the fit seems to be good uh, because the this column and this column are more or less uh, kind of similar, right? So and we can also have a look at the first value of stats, right? So if we just type stats over here, it will give us these four values, right? So the first value is our regression. So this e power minus 0 1 stands for 10 power minus 1. So the r square is actually 0 0.99992, uh, uh, right? So it, it, it seems to be a very good fit, right? And the model is obviously y is equal to uh, alpha. Alpha is 36.28, right? x1 power beta, so that is 2.63. Uh, x2 uh, power gamma which is 0.53 right so this is what we'll get from the uh, model so for any x1 and x2 for which we do not have uh, the value of y so for example x1 is equal to uh, 
again it has to be in the same domain so let us say x1 is equal to 0.4 and x2 is equal to 0 0.04. Uh, we can use this expression to find out the y values. So, that was one example for multiple linear regression. Now, we will look into another multiple regression problem, right. Uh, but this time we will not have a constant coefficient, right. So, the both the examples which we have seen so far had a constant in the model, right. So, that is why we were stacking a column of 1s and then we were stacking the independent variables, right. So, the next model which we are going to consider is not going to have a constant coefficient, right. So, here again two independent variables x1, x2, these are the y values. So, these values are given to us and we are expected to fit this model. So, the our task is to find out the values of alpha and beta for which this model uh, would best represent this data. So, again we will linearize it, right. So, we will take ln, ln y is equal to alpha ln x1 plus beta ln x2. So, if we uh, use the variable capital Y to indicate ln y, uh, a1 for alpha, a2 for beta, uh, capital X1 for ln x1 and capital X2 for ln x2, right. So, we basically end up with this, this model, right. The only difference is previously we had a a0, uh, it was a0 plus, right now we do not have this constant coefficient, right. So, it is going to be exactly the same except that for determining the uh, x matrix which has to be fed into the regress function, we will not stack it with a column of 1s. Right? So, again uh, these are exactly same what we have discussed, clearing uh, the workspace and the command window, defining the data, transforming the data and then uh, we determine capital X1 which is X1 and X2. Here we are not stacking 1s of length of X1 comma 1, right, uh, because we do not we do not have constant term in our model itself, right. So, the same way that we have been calling this regress function, it is same thing, whether there is a constant coefficient or not, the regress function remains the same. Whether there is a constant coefficient or not is to be captured you for this variable x, right. So, we give, remember it is dependent variable comma independent variable, usually we are accustomed to write x comma y, uh, if you do that um, uh, you would get an error right and it would probably tell you why the reason why you get that error. Uh, unlike the previous case where, where, where there were three values, now we will have only two values this a1 and a2 right and a1 and a2 directly correspond to alpha and beta right, there was no transformation of them. So, this is alpha, this is beta. So, similarly like last time we can also calculate y model, again this is some variable name which we have chosen right. So, x1, do, uh, x1 to the power alpha x2 to the power beta, right. So, this can be calculated because once we are done with this step, right, we actually know the coefficients, right, and alpha and beta are defined here, right. Mm, so, we will be able to calculate the y model values, right. So, again if you do y come up y, uh, y model, uh, you will be able to see uh, the values which are given to us y and what our model is predicting, right. Uh, over here you can see that the difference is significant right in this so the r square is not going to be a very high value right so again if you type stats in the command window the first variable the first value corresponds to r square so r square in this case is 0 0.4936 uh, which is not a very good value right okay so now that is uh, about uh, multilinear regression Right. So, now let us go to polynomial regression. So, polynomial regression can be done in two ways, we can either use the regress function itself or there is a separate function called as polyfit, right, uh, that can also be used, right. Uh, so, we will see both of them, we will start with the regress function and then we will also look into the polyfit uh, function, right. So, this is the polynomial that we are required to fit, y is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square and these are our data points x and y, right. So, here we have 6 data points, right uh, and this is the y, these are the y values, okay. So, the first task is to define uh, whatever is required. So, again clearing the command window, clearing the workspace, closing all the actively open plots, uh, the x vector, the y vector, we are just defining them and then again since we want only the points, we do not want them to be connected by a piecewise linear function. Right. So, we just give plot x comma y within single quotes, 
right b dot so it will put a dot blue color dot at wherever uh, wherever the points are there and then we add the x and y label so to get this x and y so now we have the data points on a plot right so this is what we have discussed so far so our model is y is equal to a naught plus a1 x plus uh, a2 x square right so what we will do is we will say we know how to do multi uh, regression so we will convert this into multi regression we will say this is y um, is equal to a naught plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2 right so the variable x2 is nothing but the variable x squared right each value squared that would be uh, x2 right uh, the capital x1 is nothing but the x that we have received right and since we have a constant coefficient we need to stack a column of ones right so whatever this polynomial regression is there that we have converted into multi linear regression right this we had seen even previously right so this part now by now you should be comfortable with we measure the length of x create as many rows involving ones then we have this x and we have this x square right so we'll have three columns so the first column would be 1 the sec next column would be 10 20 30 40 50 60 and then would be 10 square is 100 400 and so on right so that would be uh, uh, what would be in x right and again this is the same way we are accessing uh, the regress function right? these two are variable names uh, which we have used uh, regress is the function dependent variable comma independent variables right so here we will give this x which we have constructed in the previous line and then since over here we have only x and y we can actually plot and visualize the model right so since we want to do it on the same plot we do hold on right so whichever plot is this active plot uh, on the same thing we are plotting right so when we were doing linear regression uh, linear regression we needed only two points to fit a straight line right but now we are fitting a polynomial right so two points are not sufficient so what we are doing is from the minimum value of x to the maximum value of x we are generating thousand points linearly spaced right so what we are uh, doing is between this 10 and 60 that's the min and max between this 10 and 60 we are generating thousand points so at each of this point we will use the model to find out the y value so that will help us to visualize the model right so uh, otherwise if we are going to do two points then we'll just get a straight line right but the model is not a straight line right so that's why we are generating thousand points so again the first value since we know the order in which we gave uh, these columns we also know in what order will we get the coefficients so the first coefficient b1 is going to be the constant coefficient the second one is going to be the model uh, the coefficient of x and the third value is going to be the coefficient of x square right so that's why we do b of 1 so the first value which is constant plus b of 2 which is nothing but a1 multiplied by x plot uh, x plot is the points that we generated plus b of 3 so a2 into x plot uh, so these points each of the points squared right so this will give us y plot so x plot will have 1000 points and y plot will have 1000 points so now if we plot x plot and y plot uh, these are actually 1000 points over here but since they are very closely spaced uh, it seems like a continuous uh, curve right mm, so a better way to do this was plot x uh, plot x plot comma y plot comma let's say uh, r dot r dot and then close the bracket right within this single quotes r dot so we would have actually got points right so that is a better way to do it than uh, this this one right so similarly like last time we did legend right we we'll first we had plotted the measured values so we give me measured and then we plug in, uh, we plotted the model so we give measured comma model so we will get this legend also over here uh, then uh, we can if we type b in the command window we will get these three so the model is actually uh, 34.2 right plus a1 is 0.1014x plus a2 is 0.0007x square so this is our model so for any value so for example for 25 we do not have a value of y Right, so we can plug in 25 over here and we'll be we can calculate the value of y so the first value of stat is what we are interested at it corresponds to r square so we 
can just say stats, it will display all the four values or we can just say stats of 1, stats of 1 in the command window if we had done this, then it would only give 0 0.9874, right. So, this is how we do polynomial regression using the regress function, right. Remember we said like uh, for polynomial regression, there are two ways in MATLAB with which we can do. One is uh, using the regress function and the other one is using polyfit function. What we saw now was the regress function, uh, we can now look into uh, the polyfit function, right. So, this is the code that we currently discussed, right and this is how what we are going to do using polyfit. So, the syntax for polyfit is x comma y comma n, right. So, remember here it was independent, the dependent variable comma the independent variable, here it is the other way. First, we need to give the independent variable, then the dependent variable and the order that we want to fit in, right. So, here if you remember we were we are actually working with y is equal to a naught plus a 1 uh, a 1 x plus a 2 x square, right. So, we want to fit a second order poly polynomial, right. So, that is the order of the polynomial, right. So, this CLC clear close all you know. Here we are defining just the data points, right. And since we want a second order polynomial, we said n is equal to 2. Again, similarly, we are plotting um, uh, the data points, right, adding x label and y label. And then we are using this function polyfit, right. So, polyfit can return only the coefficients, it does not give us an r square uh, value, right. So, we are using this polyfit, we are saying x comma y comma n, right. So, n has been defined here to be 2. So, for this same data, we can also fit a third order polynomial, right. So, for example, if we wanted to fit y is equal to a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus a 3 x cube. All that we had to do was instead of n is equal to 2, we need to say n is equal to 3. Uh, remember unlike in regress wherein we were forming this uh, matrix x by stacking a column of 1s and then uh, having uh, x values x square, we do not need to do that for polyfit function, right. So, we have this coefficients. Uh, one thing you need to remember is the order in which we get the coefficient is the reverse as what we have obtained, what we would obtain in uh, regress, right. So, in regress the model was uh, 34.2 plus so the first value was 34.2 because the ones were stacked there plus 0.1014x plus 0.0007x square, right. Over here B is arranged in the reverse order. Right. So, that you need to be uh, careful about it, right. So, uh, when you are interpreting this B values, the last term is the coefficient, the last but one term is the coefficient of x, the last but second term is coefficient of x square and so on, right. So, that would be B. Again, this hold on is same thing, we want to still visualize it. This x plot is also the same thing. Y plot here, we were actually constructing the model, right, because this was our model, y is equal to a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square, right. Here we can directly use uh, a function called as polyval, right. So, polyval, uh, the input to the polyval is the coefficients of the polynomial which is actually in beta and the points at which we want to find the y values, right. So, x plot is the 1000 points which we generated. Remember between 10 and 60 we are generating uh, 1000 points, uh, right, linearly spaced points. So, those points are in x plot. So, the Syntax for polyval is give the model coefficients followed by the points at which you want the value of the uh, dependent variable, right. So, this will give y plot, right. Again, plot x, com x plot comma y plot. Again, we should have actually done comma r dot this, right. And then we add this legend uh, measured comma model. So, if you run this, you would, uh, uh, so if you execute this program, uh, you will still get the same plot which we got in regression, right. So, the good thing about uh, polyfit is we do not need to compose this uh, x matrix. Another feature of polyfit is that you can directly use this polyval to uh, plot the y values. Again, you do not need to uh, explicitly state what is the model as we did in regression, right. But to the best of my knowledge, polyfit does not give us the r square value, right. Uh, whereas, here using regress, we can also get the uh, r square value. So, the choice is yours, I mean uh, depending upon the situation, you can either choose to use the regress function or you can choose to use the uh, 
polyfit function, right. So, so far what we have seen is how to use a regress function uh, for simple linear regression, for multilinear regression uh, we saw how to use it in the presence of constant coefficient and in the absence of constant coefficient. Then for polynomial regression we saw it can be done with, uh, for polynomial regression we saw that it can be done using the regress function as well as it can be done using the polyfit and polyval uh, functions, right. So, in all these cases we were working only with linear models. Even if the model was non-linear we transformed, remember the couple of problems wherein we had ln function to transform it into uh, linear form, right. So, now we will look into the function nlin fit, right. So, that can be used to directly solve a non-linear regression problem, right. So, in this case we have been given this data x and y right and we have been asked to fit this model a0 into 1 minus e power minus a1 x, right. So, this NL fit also requires uh, initial starting point. So, just like for all non-linear equations you need a starting point, for non-linear regression also we need a starting values, right. So, a0 is equal to 1, a1 is equal to 1. So, this is what we are going to start with, right. So, uh, these are not optimal values, right. So, that is the task of uh, the function NLIN fit. Uh, to come up with better values of a0 and a1, right. So, the way to go, the uh, way to do it is uh, first we need to define the data points before that CLC clear close all as usual, right. So, this is the guess that we are going to work with a is equal to 1 comma 1. 1 comma 1, uh, we have chosen the uh, convention to be a0 a1, right. So, wherever uh, we get the values, the first value will correspond to a0, the second value will correspond to 1. So, if the initial guess instead of 1, 1 had to be, uh, had it been 0 0.8 and 0 0.2, uh, then we would have given instead of 1, 1, we would have given a is equal to 0 0.8 and 0 0.2. So, it is important to uh, uh, have a convention and stick to it throughout the problem. So, we will stick with this a0, comma a1. We will define a variable uh, fund right, it is actually a function handle. So, we have a function whose name is prop, right, we look into that function, right. Uh, that function uh, we have this at the rate symbol in st uh, before this prop, right. So, this basically means that we have a function handle uh, whose name is fun, right. So, whenever we access use this variable fun, we are actually referring to this uh, function prob, right, prob. It will receive two variables a and x, right, and it will return f. So, what it basically means that if you give a naught value and a 1 value in a, right, and if you give this x points, it will give y, not this y, but the y as per the model, right. So, that is what we are writing here. So, the model is uh, we could have chosen y and y over here, right. So, y is equal to a naught right, but MATLAB, uh, the index in MATLAB is starts from 1. So, a of 1, right, a of 1 because that is the convention that we have chosen. So, first value is a naught. So, a naught into 1 minus exponential minus a 1 x, right, a 1 x, here we are writing a of 2 because the second value actually corresponds to a 1, right. So, if all this is, if all this is confusing, you can just work with alpha and beta, right. So, here also it is alpha beta, alpha, beta, right. So, the first value is alpha, the second value is beta, right. So, that way we can calculate y. So, the purpose of this function is given any values for a naught and a 1 and the data points, it will tell you what is the value of the uh, dependent variable, this function will tell. So, uh, x, in this case it is 5 data points, right. So, x is going to be a, a 5 cross 1 right and a is going to be uh, 2 cross 1 because we have 2 parameters, right. So, after that, uh, so that is how this function is going to help us, right. Uh, so, when nlin fit is going to solve this problem, it is going to repeatedly call this uh, function multiple times. Uh, you can see that by removing this semicolon and solving the problem, right, you will get uh, y being printed repeatedly in the command window, okay. So, coming back to our problem. Right. So, here we are just merely plotting the data points and just giving the variable uh, labels, right, x label and y label. 
So, so far remember we have not uh, started solving regression problem, we have just defined whatever is required. Okay. So, we have discussed so far, right? so it is the same thing that we have discussed. Right? So, the syntax for inline fit is, right? so the independent variable followed by the dependent variable followed by a function handle. Right? So, here it is fun because the problem that we have is actually in uh, return in the function fun. Right? So, we wrote it in prob, uh, we have assigned that to fun. Right? So, the independent variable, dependent variable uh, followed by uh, the function where we have the problem return. So, this is the problem that we have comma the initial guess. Right? So, if you had 5 variables, let us say if you had a problem involving 5 parameters which have to be determined, then A would be a 5 cross 1. All right? So, the output of n line fit we are receiving in a variable called as beta. Right? You can give any variable name over there. Right. And we also want to plot the model. In addition to the points, we want to plot the model. So, we have this hold on. Again, as usual, from the minimum value of x to the maximum value of x, we are generating uh, 1000 linearly spaced points. Right. And then what we are doing is, so that will give us x plot. Right. So, the beta will have the model coefficients. Right. Model coefficients, it will have as many values, as many values are there in this initial guess. Right. If there had been 3 values, beta will be a 3 cross 1 vector. Right? The first value will correspond to this first variable, the second value will correspond to this second variable. So, if we had let us say 3 variable alpha, beta, gamma, that is how the guess we gave let us say 0 0.2, 0 0.7 and 0 0.1, then beta will have 3 values, the first value will correspond to the optimized value of alpha, second value will correspond to optimized value of beta and the third value will correspond to optimized value of gamma. Right. So, once we have this, now we need to find out what is the coefficient, what are the values of the uh, dependent variable y if the model coefficients are as given in beta. Right. So, beta if we type in command window, we will get this, this model. Right. Uh, so, if you stop with this, you already have beta, you already have uh, solved the problem as in like you have determined the coefficients. Right, but here we are also interested in plotting that is why we are discussing the rest of it. Right. So, for these x values we need the y value. Right. So, that we can find out using uh, by passing this beta values the model coefficient and the x values. Remember that is what this format is the model coefficients comma the uh, x values. Right. So, if we give that we get this y, y plot. Right. So, and then we can plot uh, uh, x plot comma y plot r dot we can give. Right. So, it will plot 1000 points. Right. If you increase this number of points, uh, you will get a smoother, uh, a smooth curve. Right. And then we add the legend, right? because the first uh, we had initially plotted the points and then the model, we write measured comma model again within single quote separated by a, a comma uh, using the legend function. So, it will help us to plot this plot. Right. So, that is how, uh, so that is how we can use the end line fit function to do non-linear regression. So, again remember if we are directly going to use prob over here, then we need to have the at the rate symbol over here. right? So, before concluding uh, a word of caution, right? so this is as taken from numerical methods for engineers by Chapra and Kanal. So, what we have been focusing in this part of the uh, course is uh, a simple derivation and practical use of equations to fit the data. right? However, there are lot of statistical assumptions which are inherent in linear least squares, which we have not discussed in detail. Uh, if you are interested, you can look into this uh, reference, right? Uh, the book by Draper and Smith, right? So some of the assumptions involved are uh, each x has a fixed value, it is not random, and is known without error, right? Only under this condition can we do linear regression, right? So the temp so for example, x and y. Uh, we said. So, if let us say if x is temperature and y is let us say some conversion. right? So, when we write 30 comma uh, 0.8, what we actually mean is that this 30 is known precisely, that there is no error in this 30. right? The, there could be some error in this 0.8, which is what we are trying to find using uh, linear regression model, uh, which is why we are doing regression, that we want to find a model 
which best fits the data. So, there is there, there should not be any error in this uh, x right and the y values are independent random variables and all of them have same variance. Similarly, the y values for a given x must be normally distributed. So, this y should be normally distributed. For the purpose of this course, right, uh, whatever we have covered is sufficient, right, and most uh, classical texts stop over here. But there are also other measures, right, uh, which you can, uh, if you are interested in regression, uh, you can look into that as and when required, right. So, here we have limited ourselves to uh, the simple derivation of linear regression and how to use it, uh, provided uh, the data satisfies all the assumptions that are required for linear regression. Right. These are some of the references that you can look into, uh, this book by Chapra and Canal. Uh, there is also uh, applied numerical methods with MATLAB for engineers and scientists uh, by Chapra. Right. So, here you will find lot of uh, MATLAB related functions. Right. There is also this book Matthews and Fink's particularly if you are looking for the derivation of the general least linear least squares z transpose z uh, into a is equal to z transpose y. Right. So, that derivation is actually given in this book right. and for uh, advanced concepts of uh, regression you can uh, look into this Draper and Smith. Right. Uh, so, in this session we have seen what is regression, uh, we saw what is linear regression, linear regression we discussed three types, linear, uh, simple linear regression, multilinear regression and polynomial regression, all these three with model coefficient, with constant coefficient and without uh, the constant coefficient. Uh, then we looked into some data transformation techniques, uh, we subsequently saw how do we solve nonlinear regression problem. And then in MATLAB we learnt about four functions, right? Uh, polyfit, polyval, uh, regress, and n-lin fit. So regress is to be used for linear regression, right? Uh, polyfit and polyval is to be used for polynomial fitting, whereas n-lin fit is to be used for uh, nonlinear regression. Right? So with that we'll conclude this session. Thank you.